Hi, my name's Andy, and this video is really a follow on from About Radio Part 13. In that video, I waffled on so much about tuned circuits and how they can be compared to splitting light from a prism that uh, I ran out of time. So uh, here I'll get straight on with it. Here, the wave change switch is shown in the VHF position and I showed you the incoming signal path in the previous video. The coils on the right hand side are part of the local oscillator for the AM frequencies and I just wanted to point out how that oscillator is stopped by the top two contacts of the wafer switch when it's in the VHF position. The oscillator is prevented from functioning by having its grid connected to ground via this switch contact and this resistor that's connected to ground via this capacitor. Now I'm going to move the switch into the medium wave position and I'll put it back to VHF and now this is the medium wave position again. Now the medium wave coil, that's the large coil on the outside of the frame, is connected to the first grid of the mixer valve and of course that coil is in parallel with the tuning capacitor and as the tuning capacitor is altered so of course the various radio stations are selected. The tuning capacitor is connected via a common shaft to this capacitor that controls the operating frequency of the local oscillator. Looking again at the wave change switch these items that I've uh, coloured red have come into play when we selected the medium wave frequency and you can see that they connect across that variable capacitor on the right and they allow the fine trimming or padding of the local oscillator to cover the medium frequency wave band. This is the switch in the medium wave position and here I'm showing the switch in the long wave position. Here you can see that the fixed capacitor and the trimmer, trimmer capacitor at the bottom of the image there are connected to the top of the variable capacitor and they bring the operating frequency or the receiving frequency into the long wave range. Just for completeness, I'll point out that the two coils on the left hand side are both connected in series across the tuning capacitor and they're the two coils on the frame aerial that I showed you the picture of, of course. You'll see that there's a resistor across that uh, bottom aerial coil. It's a 100k resistor and I'm not really sure what its function is. The resistor is shunting the long wave coil and when the switch is in the VHF position then I also suspect that it's instrumental in quenching the local oscillator. These are the main components of the local oscillator. Essentially it's a little shunt fed Hartley oscillator. I didn't say but the mixer valve is a triode heptode. It's a variable mu valve and um, I won't go into that but uh, you can certainly look up variable mu valves. Right let's have a little look at something different. Here I've got the uh, oscilloscope uh, connected to the top of the tuning capacitor for local oscillator. Uh, the radio uh, 
uh, wafer switch is in the VHF position so the oscillator is quenched but uh, as I move into the medium wave uh, position so you can see the oscillator uh, has woken up and then as I uh, tune uh, of the band there so uh, the frequency is increasing as you can see there and then I'll switch into the uh, long wave so uh, you, uh, a lower frequency so if you wanted to, uh, to make a little oscillator and you've got an old radio you could certainly use uh, some of the components out of it to uh, uh, to make yourself uh, a variable frequency oscillator You'll remember from an earlier video that it is the subtracted sum of the radio station's frequency minus the local oscillator's frequency that forms the IF frequency and it is that that is amplified by the following stages. The oscillator output is simply picked up from the grid on the right and brought round to grid 3 on the left. And in this left section of the valve the radio frequency signal that came in on grid 1 is mixed with the oscillator frequency on grid 3. And again we have the same jumble of frequencies as we had in the VHF section where we have the radio station frequency, the local oscillator frequency and then the radio station minus the oscillator frequency and the radio station plus the oscillator frequency and they're all fed up to the IF transformers and uh, the IF transformers that I covered in the previous video uh, sort out which particular frequency it is that's going to be uh, pass through to the next section. I'll just remind you that um, if you want to follow the circuit diagram then the radio is a GEC BC 5645 and you can find the circuit diagram on the web. If you get stuck, if you email me uh, I can uh, send you a, uh, a copy but uh, it might just make it more interesting for you if you have a, a copy of the original circuit diagram. Taking a closer look at the valve, on the left hand side the bottom connection is the filament and that goes uh, one side to ground, the other is going to that uh, symbol A. The next element up is the cathode and uh, in this case uh, that's connected to ground and then uh, the first grid up is the control grid and that's where uh, radio frequency signals come in. Uh, the second grid up from the bottom you can see internally is connected to the fourth grid and uh, that's a screen grid that's essentially connected to a constant DC supply. That third grid from the bottom allows a second input to be introduced into the valve uh, so as it can carry out the mixer function and the grid at the top is a suppressor grid just connected to the cathode and of course you have the anode at the top. For that side of the valve if you simply think of it as a triode but with two inputs uh, that's essentially all it is, the other grids uh, there's nothing you can do about them or with them uh, so uh, I, I would say don't worry about them, they're there they'll have a constant voltage on them and uh, they enhance the performance of the valve um, with that said that's, that's all there is to it. On the right hand side uh, you can see that that is uh, just a triode. I say it is a variable mu valve, 
and uh, you might find it interesting to have a look at those. Um, this valve is equivalent to an ECH81, that's Echo Charlie Hotel 81. So if you look up uh, ECH81, uh, you'll, you'll find plenty about those, I'm sure. We'll just spend a moment and uh, take in the bigger picture with the circuit diagram. The red line that you see there is now coming from the right hand side and uh, that's the uh, automatic volume control or AVC negative voltage uh, that comes off the diode in the uh, detector there and it's fed onto the control grid and uh, that's for the AM signals. Here we've got a, a new red line and it's uh, coming from the top of the page there on the right from the uh, FM ratio detector. And we've talked about that before. So that signal comes down to the bottom and uh, typically it's shown as going below the zero line. So uh, you can normally look at a circuit diagram and if the uh, line is below the zero line then reasonably that's associated with the negative feedback. Not always, but it's a good indication. We'll move in as this uh, gets uh, a little bit complicated around here. So that negative voltage is coming along the bottom uh, from right to left up to the switch and you'll see the switch is uh, of course in the VHF position down to that bottom red contact on the switch and uh, back across towards the centre of the page and it looks as though it's going up to the grid of the local oscillator and it doesn't matter it's a negative voltage but that uh, grid is connected of course to the uh, grid on the heptode so uh, that's the negative feedback and uh, I'll, I'll show you a bit more about that in the the next video uh, just one thing I think I've missed that I'll point out next. In this image you'll see that the capacitor that's in the top red line will be selected when the wave change switch is moved to the long wave position. It'll be connected to the top of the tuning capacitor that controls the operating frequency of the local oscillator. It pulls the operating frequency down to that required by the long wave band. Okay guys, I uh, hope you found that interesting. Um, thanks for watching. Bye bye.